Hello, I'm Michael Crowley. I'm a hydraulics engineer. I specialise in um, transient flow analysis, include, which includes water hammer analysis and modelling. Please have a look at my website at um, fluidmechanics.co.uk to find out a little bit more about what I do. In this video, I'm going to um, introduce the phenomenon of water hammer. I think this is something that everyone must have had some experience of. If you've ever closed a tap rapidly, um, you will have heard a, a banging noise and perhaps the pipework has shuttered. Or another example might be a washing machine or a dishwasher. They usually have automatic solenoid valves. And when they close, um, again, you can often notice the same sort of effect. Water hammer is part of the larger subject of transient flow or surge analysis. Any time the um, velocity of fluid in a pipe changes, there is a change in fluid momentum. This change in um, fluid momentum um, induces a differential pressure into the system. Um, if the change in momentum is very rapid, such as when you close a, a valve, then this produces a water hammer effect. Now, the phenomenon is called water hammer because it sounds like something's banging the pipes but it doesn't necessarily have to be water. Any fluid could actually induce water hammer into a system. In, in, in a sort of a domestic situation, um, water hammer um, generally doesn't produce pressures which would exceed the pipeline pressure rating. And I'm going to show some examples later um, in this video, which, which shows what sort of pressures you could expect to see in a sort of a domestic pipeline situation. Um, in an industrial situation, um, the risks associated with water hammer can be very large. I mean, it could potentially lead to death, and it has on a number of occasions. Um, if you're dealing with hazardous fluids, it, again, it can be dangerous, and if things go wrong, it can be very expensive to fix. So in an industrial or Type situation generally you would do a full hydraulic analysis including a surge analysis for a domestic situation generally you just design using the standard piece of equipment and you generally don't find a problem but I will as I say I will I will provide you sort of an example to show you what sort of pressure you can get in this sort of situation. So the classic arrangement would be to have a tank of fluid connected to a pipe Along the pipeline. So we have a tank with a head of fluid in it, driving water along a pipeline, and the fluid is coming out into an open ended tank or sink if it was a domestic situation. This has got a head of water H. And we can say that the, at the inlet of the, the pipe, the pressure at the inlet of the pipe pressure equals rho g h. That's the density of the fluid, gravitational constant, and the, the head. That will induce or push the water along the pipeline. And we'll just say that at any instant in time, the velocity is u, OK? But the initial velocity, which is going to be the same all the way along it, u, we'll just say it will be ui. Okay, that's the initial velocity along the pipeline. And it's a constant velocity. So we're then looking at this water hammer effect, which is closing the end of the pipe or a valve on the end of the pipe closing. So at some instance, we will block the end of the pipe and the flow at the end will stop. What that will do, it will set up a, a, a the, the water directly in contact with the blockage or the valve will stop. It has to stop because there's nowhere for it to go. And basically that, that will induce a wave which will travel up the pipeline. On one side of the wave, the velocity will be stopped. And on the other side of the wave, the velocity will still be the initial velocity. So it produce a wave which goes up the pipe. This wave travels up the pipe at velocity c, which is the sonic velocity, the speed of sound in the pipe. 
Now what you find, and so we'll say that here, the velocity u, sorry, I'll put it, u equals zero, and in here, u equals i. When you close the valve, you'll find it, it, it's impossible to close it absolutely instantaneously. It does take some, some period of time. And what you find is actually that this is not a, um, just a straight line or just a, a single position in the pipe. It actually produces, there's, there's a section of pipe where the velocity is changing. So basically, because it takes a finite amount of time for the valve to close, you induce this wave which travels up it. On this side of the wave, the velocity is the initial velocity. On this side of the, the wave, the velocity is zero. And from there to there, the velocity is deaccelerating or stopping. Now, for the, the velocity to, to stop, it requires, you basically have to, Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, you have to bring apply a pressure to actually do it, to, to actually bring it to rest. And that there, across there, we have this differential pressure, P. Now, Newton's second law is force equals mass times acceleration. Now, for a hydraulic system, we have a pressure times an area of the pipe, which is the force, okay? And this is the momentum change. Force times, times acceleration is, is the rate of change of momentum, okay? So let's apply that formula to, to our system. So we have the pressure, which is the delta P across the, um, the wave front, delta P. And it's acting on the area of the pipe, and let's just call the area of the pipe A, okay? So we need to work out what the momentum change of the fluid is. Well, first of all, we need to know how much fluid is actually being deaccelerated in any instant in time. Well, if the wave is moving up the pipe at velocity c, it's basically the mass of fluid that that wave travels through. And, and the mass of fluid that wave travels through is basically the, the, the distance that wave travels, so that's c times the area of the pipe, because the area of the pipe, okay, times the density of the fluid, rho. Right. Okay. So that's the mass of, of fluid um, transfer to, going up the pipe, but the velocity change, but it's going from ui down to zero, so it's ui. Okay. We can cancel through by a on both sides, and um, therefore delta P equals C rho ui. Or more generally, it's called the, 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 the pressure, the pressure equals C rho u, where u is the change in velocity. That's quite a famous formula. It's called the Jacuzzi equation. And that is what determines the maximum pressure rise when, about, when, a, when you get a sudden closure of a pipeline system. So what we need to do now, um, and I'm going to try and do this by way of an example of a 15 millimeter copper pipe um, closing off as sort of a domestic situation. So, so let's, let's say, for example, we have a copper pipe, 15 millimeters. Um, we'll say the initial velocity is one meter. We know the density of the fluid, which is water, which is a thousand, and we're gonna try and work out how much differential pressure that, that produces. What we need to find, the difficult bit to find, is C, what is the, the speed at which the wave travels up the pipe? So let me just uh, move that equation up to the top there. So Jacuzzi, pressure equals rho C U. So what does C equal? Well, C is the solid velocity and the Hooke's law for, now this Hooke's law is for velocity in a fluid. Now this assumes that the pipes are perfectly rigid so that there's no flexibility in the pipes. Um, and you can use this for any fluid or gas for that matter. 
So basically Hooke's law is that the speed equals the, the bulk modulus, the square root of the bulk modulus divided by the density. Now for, for water, um, the, the square root, the, the, the bulk modulus, I think it's 2.19 times 10 to the 9, and the density is 1,000. And if you calculate that, it comes out at um, uh, 1,480 meters per second. So that's the speed of the velocity of a pipe if it was perfectly rigid. Now, it's not perfectly rigid. The pipe flexes. And the pipe flexing makes quite a big difference, or can make quite a big difference, to the, to the speed of the... Um, of the wave. So there is another formula which is adjustment to this Hooke's, Hooke's Law's formula to take into account the, um, the, the, the stiffness of the pipe and the wall thickness. And this formula is that C equals the um, square root, it's very similar in form. And some of the terms are the same as the Hooke's law formula. Um, rho 1 on k plus um, d, d, yeah, d, d on um, okay. So what's this formula say? This here is to do with the pipe. So this is the diameter of the pipe. This is the uh, Young's modulus of the material that you're, you're using. And this is the wall section, section of the pipe. Now, if we take for a copper pipe, and um, so we take a 15 millimeter copper tube. So its diameter is 15. Okay, its wall thickness, I just know this is standard, the standard wall thickness of that pipe is, is, is 0.7 millimeters. And I believe the, um, Young's modulus of copper is, um, so let me just look it up, yeah, is 120 gigapascals. So if you put those numbers into that formula and calculate it out, you can do this yourself. So, 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 so basically we have root 1 on 1,000. K one on um, two point one nine times ten to the nine plus um, D, which is fifteen, which is not point not not sorry not point one five on E, which is one hundred and twenty times ten to the nine um, times the wall thickness, which is not point oh seven. 7.7 millimeters. Okay. Now I'll let you do those that, that calculation yourself, but what you should find it comes out to is um, 1,254 meters per second. So the 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 the, the, the basic pipe was um, without the, the stiffness of the, the, the taking into account the, the wall thickness was about 1,450, well, sorry, 1,480 yeah, meters per second, and it's reduced to that. Now, it's not, with, with a copper pipe, a copper pipe is very stiff, okay? So the difference isn't that significant. But for other pipes, plastic pipes, so if you take, take the pipe that you might, um, that they might use in the street to, to deliver water to your house, those types of plastic pipes, typically the speed there is about a thousand meters per second. If you were talking about a garden hose pipe, it could be hundreds of meters per second. Um, one of the things though that you've got to be very careful of is, is this here, the stiffness of the, of, the, um, of the water. Water is actually very stiff. Um, but it's not if it's got air in there. So if you've got any tiny little air bubbles in there, that can make a, a massive difference to the um, to, to, to the wave speed in the pipe.
So, so where do we go from here then? So let's 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 take a look at this this copper pipe. So so we've got now the copper pipe, the waste speed down the bottom there. And um, let me just go back up to the top and clear some space here. The next set of calculations. So let's take an example of a copper pipe with a wave with, with a velocity in the pipe of one meter per second. Okay, now I, I've used one meter per second because that's an equivalent to um, a flow rate in the copper pipe of, I did the calculation and I think it's about yeah, 8.7 liters per minute. Now, typically, you know, in a sink or something like that, you'd be probably getting 10 or 12 liters per, per minute. So, so actually, one meter per, 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 per second is, is about right or where you're going to be at in a normal sort of domestic situation. So if we work out the, the pressure for that, that, that particular case, pressure rather than density, so it's one times a thousand times um, one, two, five, four, so the, the pressure within instantaneous valve closure, if you multiply that out, will come out at um, 12 point, 12.54 times 10 to the 5. I've used 10 to the 5 because 10 to the 5 is a bar, so that equals 12 bar, 12.5 bar. Now, um, if you look at copper pipe pressure rating um, of that size, I think you'll, you'll find out that the working pressure is, um, the standard working pressure for copper pipe is maximum working pressure, shall I say, is 59, 58 bar. Okay, so if you divide, you know, let's just look at the safety factor that you've got on there. 58 divided by 12.5, okay. And that comes out at um, 4.64. Or another way of looking at that is if the velocity was 4.64, and you put that into that equation there, you get the 58 bar. Okay. So unless the velocity in the copper pipe gets up to this sort of velocities here, um, then you're going to be okay. And as I said, one meter a second is equivalent to 8.7 meters. I think you're going to, that's going to be some some flow coming out of the sink if it's at uh, four meters per second. Yeah. So 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 for a domestic type of situation, um, the, the in, in a copper pipe, um, generally, if even though you may get a banging noise and it may not sound very comfortable, the pressure is all right. However, you've got to be a bit careful just looking at pressure. There are other things that can happen. The pipes can rattle around, um, and you might be putting loading on the joints, the, the bracketry which holds the pipe might be moving, your joints may not be as strong as that, so they may fail. So, so there are, it's, it's, it's not um, saying it's safe, but in terms of the actual pipe itself, it, it, it shouldn't fail. I, I should also point out that this is for copper pipe. Nowadays a lot in, in sort of houses and domestic situations, they're sort of going more across to sort of plastic pipes. The pressure rating is probably less. I haven't done the calculations for it. Um, I'll leave you do those. But um, but you'll also find that the, the wave speed will be a lot lower. So you know there's probably a balance there. And, and also I should say that in a sort of a domestic situation, generally with a tap, what you can usually do is there's usually some sort of at the back of the sink, there's usually a me mechanism for adjusting the flow. And that's what you know a good plumber would do. He would he would set it up for you. So that you don't have too excessive velocity, and therefore um, you're not going to exceed the, um, the pipeline pressure rating. For my next um, video in this series, I'm going to continue with this explanation and explain what actually happens when this wavefront that travels up the pipe gets to the end. It's then reflected and comes back to the pipe, and I'd like to explain what happens and how that sets up vibration in the pipe work. Um, that will be in the next video. Um, please leave some comments on this video in the, in the section below. Um, check out my website at fluidmechanics.co.uk. Um, I'd be quite happy to help you with any search problems. So thank you for watching. Bye-bye.